It's Wednesday, May the 22nd, and you're tuned in to the Tinity Podcast. I'm Vince. Hi, there. And this is the Geek Chic Culture Show. We talk about all the cool things in the whole wide world. End of May is upon us. We've just had a long weekend here in Canada. It was good. Yeah, I chilled. Literally, because it was cold. But also, it's relaxed. It was a cold. It was kind of cold. How cold was it? I'm dressing for summer now. Mm-hmm. But oh, as cool. you wear a sweater, yeah, and my long off- pants. My office is winter all year round, baby. So how are you dressing for summer? Like, are you wearing shorts or something? Are you wearing a tank? You know, I don't wear shorts. You wearing wear- a tank? I wear I wear pants and a t shirt. Oh, this is where I left my knife. Oh, I was trying to find that. No, oh, good. good. <laughs> I'm glad you found it. All right. Why are you dressing for summer? It's not even summer. I know, but it's like it's close. But it's not. It's close. But it ain't. It's close enough. Mm, we're still at least a month away. Oh, shit. Anyways, um, stuff that we're going to start off the show with is... Let's do a review. Do it. We watched a movie. We watched... Mr. Vic. <laughs> Mr. Vic. Mr. Vic. Mr. Vic, how are you? What was his full Russian name? Uh, it's like Yanovic. Yeah. John. Jo- it, it, Jovanic or something? Yeah, it's like Giovanni Jovanovic. Actually, I think I have that on. I think they have it on my, on my Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Niet. 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 Giordani Jo. Oh, Giordani. Giordani Jovan- Jovanovic. Jovanovic. Which officially makes him a Jojo. Says who? Says the internet. Yeah. And he has a dog stand with a gun. <laughs> okay. Okay. Easy there. Uh yeah, we watched John Wick Chapter Three Parabellum. Which we now know stands for Something? Something about war. Yeah. Because they they say the line in the movie. Also, you know, actions have consequences. Yes. Just so you know. Apparently they yeah. do. In case the movie it wasn't clear in the movie, <laughs> yeah. actions have consequences. So this picks up directly off of chapter two, mm-hmm. Mr. Wick. He's on the is on the run. Mm-hmm. His uh his contract of everyone's gonna kill you now mm-hmm. is live, and that's what the movie's about. They they come back in like what the the last the last hour of yeah. him escape. It's like immediately after two the two like immediately. Mm. Yeah, I think that's more or less the plot. Yeah, that's it. He's got to escape and survive. Yeah, he's got to figure out a way to take the bounty off his head. Yeah, politics ensue in the back half, mm-hmm. but I feel like. Of the little plot this movie has, it's probably best if we don't spoil that. Yeah, yeah. It's because it is the only plot the movie has. Wild. So, yeah. Jonathan Wick. Jonathan Wick. What did you oh, think? Oh, Jonathan what Wick. What did you think about John Wick 3? So, I really enjoyed John Wick 1. Okay, okay. I thought 2 was good, but it started to lose me. okay. Three has completely lost. Oh, for me. Th- completely! Comple- Come on! Like I don't get me wrong. I will. Wa- I'll continue to watch these movies, and I will. I will enjoy them for the popcorn munching fest that they are. Mm-hmm. But it is now gone from this really cool small scale film to yo check it out. We got the lore runs deep, <laughs> deep, <laughs> and like it's not grounded in any reality anymore. What are you it's, talking about? No. They explain it, everything. Mm, they explain everything. They ex- their explanations amount to a whole bunch of bullshit. I want to meet the one <laughs> yeah. who sits above the table. And it's, yeah, it's <laughs> all of these fucking analogies oh. to shit that you can't even relate to. What are you talking about? Apparently everyone's in the fucking game of this movie. Everyone's in the like, game. There are less civilians than there are people who are in the game. Who's the who's that one cop from Brooklyn Nine Nine? Uh, who's like not not Gina? Oh, her boyfriend. Yeah, her boyfriend's oh, in this movie. Yeah, I forget his name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's in this movie, and you're like, what? The Even fuck? he run. You thought the police were free? No, come on. Jeez. I mean, no. Go wrong. It's crazy. It's it's fun and entertaining. Like a lot of. You want to see a good action movie? This is the one to watch. Yeah. Like, some really cool shit happens. Yeah, um, yeah, it does. It's, it's it's the standard John Wick affair, like really, really meticulously crafted choreography sequences, uh, attention to detail with a lot of their gunplay and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I did find it that this one is a bit. They went deliberately out of their way to be a bit more flashy, as opposed to just precise killing machine. Yeah, 
Like there was a lot of just there's a lot of extra there's a lot of double taps. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of just like wasted ammo. ammo. Just like unloading yeah. into somebody. Especially considering at this point, Mr. Wick let's just say he's starved for guns. <laughs> And, and even when he's not. Yeah. So so every time he does get a gun, it just feels wrong of him to just waste bullets. Just chuck shit. Yeah. yeah. So that was the one part of the movie I couldn't quite get a, a grasp around. But, but what about when he gets knives? Oh, it's, that's a different story. Or that, books. That's okay. <laughs> that's just being creative. <laughs> This guy fights with everything under the sun. Yeah. Everything under the sun. There was no pencil scene. No. But he wrecks people. Just absolutely destroys them. Yeah. There's a part in this movie where, like, by now you're all like, oh, yeah, Jonathan Wick is known for. He's got to confirm his kills. Yeah. And they do something to subvert that. Yeah. Which is really cool. But, uh, and it leads to something even cooler. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> but that's the surprise you guys have to see yeah, on your own. See that. Yeah. Uh, but no, I thought it was a fun movie. It was, it was cool. Like it's it it is one hundred percent now summer movie blockbuster. Yeah, they've gone full Fast and the Furious. Yeah, like it. Yeah, it's definitely crossed that line. It is no longer. This was a cool little project that they put together. Yeah. It's like, it's like you know a simple revenge tale. This is nah. We're, we're shooting for the moon now. Yeah. This is Fast Four. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what this, this is. This is the jumping off point. Yeah. Yeah, and I will continue to watch all of these. These are great. Holy shit, this movie is so good. Yeah, are you okay. kidding me? Mm. The gunplay. The gunplay is so awesome. And even when they don't... Oh, they just use great... Like, Holly Berry's got two dogs, and they just destroy shit. And they're yeah. so creative with how they use, like, the dogs tactically. Yeah. Uh, they they should go like super deep into the lore, like you mentioned. Like they they show some back end stuff. They they don't really show the high table. No. They show someone who works for the high no. table. But they definitely allude to the fact that this is definitely Assassin's Creed levels. Yeah, deep. it runs. <laughs> and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> the Templars oh. are here, oh, baby. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the amount of eye rolls I had through the through those like I cannot believe this is happening. Yeah. Dude, come on. No. The thing is, is like I can't even I can't talk about like the more most ridiculous plot points. Yes. Right? Because they're just they the, they are like the they're the only bits of plot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In between like twenty minute gunfights. Yeah. Right? Uh this is yeah, you 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 said it all. Like it's it's definitely now full on summer blockbuster movie popcorn muncher. Like yeah. It is, it is so much bigger than what it originally started out yeah. as, right? And I think a lot of it, like the, a lot of the charm from John Wick One, is somehow still there. Like I don't get it. The the thing with um, what, what don't you get? Like I don't get how they keep it consistent. Usually there's a there's a bad egg like somewhere. Like Marvel had Thor Ragnarok, right? Or not Ragnarok, the, the Thor Dark World. Okay. Right? Uh, Fast and the Furious had Too Fast, Too Furious. And arguably Fast 4. Uh-huh. Um, but all three of these movies I would watch over and over again. Like, these are great. These are fantastic. These go... All three of these movies, I think, go in, like, the pantheon of some of the greatest action movies of all time. Like, mm. beside, like, Ong Bak or mm. uh, Hard Boiled and mm. shit like that. It, it's crazy how they can amp up the scale but still keep the action good right because all i'm coming in here is for the action like the the yeah. ridiculous lore is just like the icing on the cake yeah but yeah, yeah. but how, how they keep everything so consistent throughout these movies i'm just like wow they keep think, thinking of new ways to um to subvert my expectations like the one, um, just a slight one. There's, there's a fight where John jumps into a pool, right? Oh yeah. yeah right, and yeah. they use like cool. they use the physics of that against the enemy, and like I'm like John, you absolute murdering genius! Like yeah. he's so smart when it comes to murder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. And you just they just keep you on your toes, and you're you kind of never know what they're gonna do next, yeah. what they're gonna use <clears throat> next. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, the whole initial fight scene in Chinatown when he's running through that one building, that one antique building. Yeah. Like, 
there's a lot of crap in there that I would have not expected. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just fantastic. It's just so good. I definitely think in the ranking of John Wick movies, it goes one, three, then two. Yeah. But this is this is close. This is a close one. I don't know if it's see if for me it's more it's different. Okay. Like I don't know. Like John Wick One is a movie where like, I would just say like that's just a good movie. Oh, uh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, but this one you're gonna put like it's a caveat. Like yeah. this is a good action. Like movie. this is a great action movie. Like no doubt this is an entertainment like masterpiece. Mm -hmm. But just know, don't take it seriously anymore. Yeah, it's like don't even bother trying to make sense of it. Yeah. It is just. They even make fun of their own plot. Multiple yeah, times the and movie. half the characters now just feel so comical and yeah. like just far more caricatures of themselves. Well, all now. the Russians. I mean, even the guys in the in the concierge now. You're just like, oh yeah, oh. true. You're like, what happened? Like what? this. This used to be like this. It's it used like in the first movie. It seemed like this very professional serious affair but now yeah. it's just like beyond yeah it's... these guys are just all drunk off power and just... yeah well that that was the one thing i felt about Lawrence fishburne's character yeah where in the first or the second movie he didn't seem vi like he was kind of comical like he had some jokes here and there he, he was more loose because he was like the homeless informant yeah, yeah right for sure but in this one he goes off yeah right i think one of his lines is literally you know sometimes you gotta cut a bitch like that's one of his <laughs> lines right <laughs> And they do, I would agree with you with that, that they do make people into caricatures. Yeah. Uh, I would probably say that the only character who, side character who's not that still is yeah. uh, is the butler. Or not the butler, the, the concierge yeah. main desk guy. Yeah. I would say he, he's still his character through and through. Yeah. He just now has secret skills that yeah. we didn't know about. <laughs> yeah. His, his, that was a little bit uh, telling, but okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it. I, I guess I'll, I'll agree with you that it's different. Like, here's the thing. But my enjoyment of, of one and three are almost <clears throat> par. Really? Interesting. Yeah. See, I would say, as much as I like this movie, and the more, and the, I hate to say this, but like, the further and further this series go, the less um, it retroactively makes the first one worse. What? No. Yeah, because now the whole, the, the first one seems so meaningful, right? Do you feel the same way about Fast and the Furious? What when they first started out, yeah. Yeah. And now I'm like, no. Like you go back to one, and you're just like, what is this franchise? Become? Yeah, exactly. I because that that issues never came up with me in terms of franchises. Because like I I always feel that I can go back to those first ones and be like, oh, like this is what it was. This is like its own thing. It's like a time capsule, right? And you can look at it separated from the universe. Yeah, that's that I can. But the yeah. more, but then every time I think about the future ones, I'm like. What the fuck has happened here? There's like, barely cars in this like, movie. Like, this is not even, like, what's the point? In the same way you look at Hobbs and Shaw and you're like, yeah. what the fuck is this shit? You mean Wild Speed and Super Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. That's how I see this movie as it's related to the first John Wick now. Interesting. You know, it's like, because I don't need, I, I honestly don't know what his motivation is in this movie anymore. He's, like, he's he, just constantly getting fucked. Like, yeah, but he says, like, he even says, like, what he's fighting for, but you just yeah. never believe it anymore. Mm. Like you just don't believe that he's there for his wife anymore. You know, like that was like the driving force of the first movie, and it made so much sense. Mm -hmm. Second one, you're like, eh, I believe it. And then the se and the third one, you're like, fuck is even happening here? <laughs> like, what? What? Who cares if he got married? He's eternally like, who, tormented. Like, who cares if he got out and lived he's a life? He's a tormented. fucking murderer. We, yeah, he's been a murderer since the first movie. Exactly, <laughs> which means that the, like his whole point of the first movie. Is meaningless. Mm. I think if they harp any more on, th like, this is definitely the last movie that they can be like, oh my god. Oh, wife. yeah, for right? sure. They if, can't. if they keep bringing, like, if he finds another secret stash of assassin coins <laughs> and another <laughs> picture of his wife is in there, I'm yeah. just gonna be like, dude, come on. Yeah. Right. Um, but, but I think it's, I would say it's still valid in this movie. But the ending of this movie is no longer now John is in it for his wife. Yeah. John is in it for John. Yes. And John is in it to fuck over other people. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Also, I can't believe how they incorporated the tattoo from the first movie. Oh, yeah. That was so sick. Yeah, that was, that was cool. so cool. Yeah. It was It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Neato. Cool. Neato. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. So that's John Wick. Uh, guys, go see it.
It's good. It was a good movie. It's very good. It's super good. Next up, we have a question to chew on from Paul Paulathan Chu. Mm-hmm. Oh, Paulathan. Paul Is that his name? Paulathan Chu? I think so. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think that's like the traditional that's a pronunciation. Tradition. Yeah. Paulathan? All right. Well, Paulathan writes. I have kept up with Vince's thoughts on this season of Game of Thrones, but assuming you'll talk about them in this episode, I won't bring up any specifics. Okay. There's been a lot of backlash on social media with a lot of people who were diehard fans of the show not liking the end of the series and that saying and saying that it killed the show for them. Would you when you guys are enjoying a great show that has a bad ending, does that ruin the overall show for you, or are you able to separate the end out? Do you have any examples? Knowing that the ending is bad, does the show ever make it back to your dream rotation of a good show? Um, I think the one that immediately comes to mind for me is Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. Like, I really like Seinfeld. I really yeah. like Seinfeld. But that last step, like, it's a show about nothing, yeah. right? So how the hell are you going to end that? Like, yeah. it's obviously going to be a glorified flashback episode, right? Yeah. So I'm not too mad at that. And and the ending kind of encompasses everything that the show is about. It's four people who are really shitty people. Yeah. And they kind of got their comeuppance, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's a special case, but that is definitely a show where... I like the last episode the least out of every other episode, but I can still go back to George yeah. sleeping under his desk yeah. or the soup Nazi yeah. and stuff like that and just still enjoy my time. I think that, yeah. I think it, that um, really benefits from being semi episodic. Yeah. Right. There are some things that carry over from yeah. episodes, but it's yeah. mostly like here's the situation. Yeah. And that so I think it's tough for when you throw a sitcom into the mix, just because a sitcom, like even though there's a, obviously there's like a a very loose plot, mm -hmm. it's not something where the the through line plot is the main focus of the show. It's yeah. always like every it's kind of like The Simpsons in that every episode is standalone, mm -hmm. even though there is some sort of continuing factor to them. But I sort of get your point, Seinfeld. Yeah, that one was that one was pretty bad. I kind of don't like the final episode of Breaking Bad. Oh, why not? I thought it ended great. I thought it ended pretty well. I just thought, like, the overall episode was boring. Like, I thought the ending ending was kind of, like, what you oh, do okay. with that character, right? But I just thought the, the lead-up to those, like, final 30 seconds was just kind of boring. Hmm. I You know, it's been a while. I can't remember. I do remember liking it, but I can't remember the specifics. I just remember in a car shooting. There was... It was a car shooting. Not in a car shooting. It was a car shooting. <laughs> oh, okay. Right? Okay. Is that what it was? Uh, yeah. There, oh, okay. there was a lot of stuff in that final episode where he's like borderline Iron Man, like Gen 1 Iron Man. Oh, is that what's happening? Or oh, I'm just okay. like, he's making weird ass gadgets okay. in his car and like doing wild ass Fair shit. Enough. Right? So I'm just like, okay, come on. You cook math. I get it. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of hard to think of other shows. Uh, well, I guess his question is like, does it... In the I guess you answer with Seinfeld. It doesn't I guess it doesn't ruin the show for you, does no, it? No, no, it doesn't ruin the show retroactively. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing we talked about with Fast and or not Fast and Furious, John, John Wick, Wick yeah. where like having a, a bad movie doesn't retroactively ruin the first one for me. Like right. Thor: Dark World doesn't ruin Thor for me. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think in in the context of Game of Thrones, I think the reason why I was so upset is just that it's not so much that. I thought the ending was bad. It mm -hmm. was just, it it didn't make sense mm -hmm. in the sense that like a lot of what the show was leading up to never really touched upon that. A lot of the characters never acted like themselves anymore. So it was bad. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just. It was just like it, you. It was, you got the sense that like we needed to end this because we're done. We're done with it. We just want it to be over. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for the shortest way out. And so it, nothing, anything they did never felt earned. Uh, I still am going to go through and watch Game of Thrones again because I, I still really loved everything up leading to the end, mm -hmm. ending. Uh, the big one that comes to my mind that I know got a huge bunch of backlash was the Mass Effect ending. Oh, for three. For three. I thought that was dumb because I thought that ending was good. That's what I thought. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't, I, I, in one, on one hand, I get, where the issue came from like people wanted to see how their choices affected the future mm -hmm. but the way they chose to end it was that they 
I think more or less spoilers. Sorry. How they, old is Mass Effect Three now? Twenty. Yeah, like twenty twelve. Right? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah. So they, I think it's like they wanted to rebuild the galaxy. Yeah. And so like I was totally fine with that. Like the whole game is about choices. The ending is about choices. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's and how you thematically like, correct. Yeah, like I thought it fit. They and they they even with after the patches, I don't understand how that would have changed anything. Yeah, I think I think people were really for that one. They were really dead set on how to see what their choices would affect the future. But if yeah. the future has changed, it just kind of throws it all out the window. Mm-hmm. And but yeah, no, I thought thematically it was correct, and I still love Mass Effect. I'm just, I'm still looking for time to go back and play the trilogy. Like I loved going through that. So. Yeah, that's the only other one. So yeah, I don't think a bad ending per se, like a bad, the way it wraps up, would ruin a show for me. I know definitely on the other hand, uh, or on the other side of that coin, a good ending, uh, I feel, makes a game retroactively better. Like there is definitely some stuff in the original Red Dead where I'm just like, okay, some of these missions are cookie cutters of the the last ones I did. Some of these towns are all the same, right? But you know that you're gonna come up to a good ending. But I know that last ending. I'm just like, holy fuck, that was worth. Like yeah. that was worth it, right? Yeah, that's I, true. I know that definitely works out. Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah. So yeah, I guess. Uh, no, I don't think a bad ending will lessen the enjoyment of something for me. No. Yeah. Um. But yeah, bad ending's a bad ending. You can't change that. Yeah. All right, there's a comment on a review of Endgame. Mm-hmm. Wait, really? Yeah. It's on from, the YouTube channel. Yeah, it's from Lions Den 99 What's up? I feel like Captain Marvel had to be inco- inconsequential. They filmed Endgame before Captain Marvel was shot, so they had no idea on audience reaction to her, if her film would flop, etc. They made it safe by having her do a couple cool things, saving Iron Man in space, out arm wrestling Thanos, but focused on the core cast and exiling her to space. As for Thor, yeah, he's being a bit of a bitch. But for a <laughs> godlike character who used to, who used, uh, who is used to victory, he suffered intolerable losses. His mother, his relationship, his father, his hammer, his home, his friends, his brother, half his people, and the knowledge that he could have saved half of the universe if not for his pride. It's only because of Chris Hemsworth humor that they could keep the character comedic. Also, the reason Thanos could take down the Hulk was because he had the Power Stone, so that explains why Cap could fight him a bit more evenly. I think that's it. Did Cap have any sort of Power Stone? Oh, you're saying that because he beat up the Hulk in the last movie, he had the Power Stone, that's why he beat him up. Okay, yeah. I, got, okay I got it. I guess that makes more sense. Did we talk about that? I think so. We're like, how, how the... Like, why is Captain America so strong? Like, Thanos is such a strong dude. Oh yeah, he, like, ch- right. he chipped away at the adamantium shield even without yeah the stone, right? Yeah, so that's why yeah. that, that didn't make sense. But I guess yeah, okay, sure, fair. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a lot of stuff in there. I guess the for the Captain Marvel stuff, like it that explanation makes sense. Um, it still doesn't lessen the fact that I feel like she's a waste. Like she's a waste. Like what's the point then? Like she, she is she is the 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 she is the out right. Like you have this dramatic cliffhanger of Tony stuck in space. Or the last movie, she's the immediate out to that. Yeah. Uh, and to me, to make a, a whole important character in a in a like that kind of a universe, and relegate her to just being a, a dog, like literally yeah. just go fetch this dude yeah. and bring him back. It's yeah. kind of shitty. It is. It is. And like, I also get the point that they want to relegate it to the original core cast. It's their last one out. This is their big hurrah. Mm-hmm. You know, Captain Marvel hasn't earned her moment yet. Yeah. But at that same point, why, why put someone so like why put someone so powerful, so huge, into this movie, mm-hmm. and then just to not have them do anything, just do nothing, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't know. like it's it's a it's a tough act. I don't, I I would have been happy if she just didn't exist, but that's wow. just me. Savage. I would have snapped her out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you, I would have been like, yo, hundred percent, fifty percent, right? But except for that one, get rid of her. Forty nine point nine 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 nine. That's what I would have done. That's what I would have done. Okay. I think we also had a just a little post from John Saab. Did we? Yeah. It wasn't a question on the John, but it was just a post. <clears throat> was it the one about Cersei? Yeah. I don't get that. Can you explain that to me? I, I understand that Cersei didn't do shit. Apparently, she was in two episodes and then bailed. But what's the picture? Uh, Cersei is just chilling out on set with sunglasses on. <laughs> 
full costume. Oh, that's her. That's the character. That's okay, the okay. Character. Yeah, that's uh, great. The quote that John wrote was Cersei this season making mad money to do nothing. nothing. Okay, and that's exactly what she did. Okay. Yeah. Did you want to rant about the ending of Game of Thrones at no, all? No, I had my rant. I was no. in the middle of the streets, and you're like, ah, oh, why? Yeah. So I had my time. It's over. I'm done. Unless my boss told him, listen. Uh, it's I'm not ups- good. I'm upset. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that is that. Let's move on to our picks of the week. Mm-hmm. Guys, guess what? What? New Coke is coming back. New Coke? What are you talking about? New Coke 1985 is coming back. I wasn't, its, I wasn't born then. With its new Coke. Re- Neither was I. Shit. <laughs> Oh, this really will be a new Coke for me. You think I have a grandpa? Come on. Bring back Pepsi Crystal or whatever. Crystal Pepsi. Pepsi Dex. Pepsi Crystal. Pepsi Blue. Yes, uh, Stranger Things Season 3 had a trailer out. A couple trailers, actually. It's coming back July 3rd. But a big promotion they're doing is that, I think, in the show, it's 1985 now. Okay. 1985, of course, was the year when Coke decided that everyone who liked their drink deserved to try a new drink. And they're like, listen, we know you love the original, but... Check it out. Check out this new shit. Check out this new Coke. <laughs> and uh, it's coming back. So for all y'all who haven't tried new Coke... Because you weren't coming. born. Yeah. Oh, we, ha- we haven't tried new Coke. I wasn't even a sperm then. Neither was I. <laughs> so I'm excited to try some new Coke. <laughs> okay. And I think that's it. For... No. Is that all you got? No. Really? John Wick Chapter 4 got announced. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 2020 July? 2021. What? Not 2020? No, 2021. Oh, 2021. Two right. years. Two years. You're right. On that oh two-year release schedule. Oh my god. Okay. That's a long time away. It's a, it's a decent chunk of time to make me forget that it's coming out then. Um, other small acts. Uh, remember the Ouya? I do remember the Ouya. It's closing down next month. Wait, it wasn't closed down already? No, servers are officially going offline next wow. month. Wow. So, RIP Ouya. Good thing I didn't buy a Ouya. Shit. Or do I buy Ouya now? Oh, God. Do I, oh. go, do I go back? Oh, God. Oh, God. And then, um, finally, Legend of the Sport of Formula One, Nikki Lauda has died. Really? 70. Oh, okay. Which is kind of young when you think about it. Yeah, when you think about, like, how rich he is, it <laughs> seems kind of young. Like, I feel like he'd be on that new medicine shit. Yeah. Like, injecting young people's blood into his blood so he can live longer. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you haven't heard about that? Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I will say, uh, you know what? A lot of people actually would say, though, that Nikki Lauda was living on borrowed time for the past 34 years. Why? Because if you remember watching the movie Rush, which I do. he was the star of, he had that crash. Oh, yeah. Uh, his lungs filled with fire and smoke. Damn. And I think in the past six months, he tried to have a lung transplant. A lung transplant. Yes, yes, he wanted new lungs. Damn. Uh, uh, but it says he, but you no, know, a statement from his, his people say that he passed peacefully. And like he said, huh? he was on borrowed time, but he huh. lived a good life. To to live until 70 with fire lungs. Pretty, pretty impressive. Pretty epic. Pretty impressive. I wish I pretty could impressive. say that about myself. Uh, so that's it. So I got, yeah. you done? All right. Well, uh, Sony had a little like tech show, I guess. And they were uh, they were showing off their new load times yep. on the next gen <clears throat> platform, not the not the PS Five, the next clearly gen. clearly not the PS Five, the next gen platform. I didn't see a five on there. I did not either. I didn't even see the word PlayStation. No. But here's the thing: uh, they have custom built their own SSD. Mark Cerny hard at work doing some math or something. I don't know, uh, but he custom built his own SSD, and and they're showing off the load times of Spider Man. PS4, you want to load up the city? Eight seconds. Mm. Well, I got eight seconds. Come on. New hard drive? 0.8 seconds. Wow. There's a Twitter post about it. Go find it. It's nuts. It's Welcome nuts. to that next gen loading life. I'm ready for this future. This future. But here's the thing. With faster technology yes. comes bigger games. <gasps> so do you think... Even with the the faster load times of this SSD, I highly doubt that load times will be gone. I'm sure they're just gonna load in now like 16k textures. Or I some think shit. that the first the launch games. Oh, they're gonna be instant, speedy. But like two three years in, 
Yo, guys, check out these minute-long yeah, load, load times. times. We brought them back. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> we man. heard it's, you miss load times. It's, fuck, it's going to turn to that, and then it's going to be like, please insert disc two. Yeah, Red yeah. Dead 3 is going to have it, a 200 gig download, yeah. like a one terabyte download. Yeah, yeah it's going to be ridiculous. Uh, but that was cool just to see like how much better next-gen technology is kind of becoming. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Uh, oh, we forgot to watch this, but the Red Band trailer for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out. The new Quentin Tarantino yep. movie. Yep. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's good. I forgot. I wanted to put it on, but I forgot. We'll watch it later. It's just good. Go watch it. It is about Hollywood. It is about Hollywood. So not really... 80s Hollywood. Um, Let's say anything like Tarantino's done before? Yeah, I would say it's, it's nothing like, like that. Like, this is definitely... A lot of his stuff is, like, really crime-focused or a lot assassin. A violence. A lot of violence. And I'm, I'm sure there's going to be violence in this movie mm -hmm. but not the sort of like you should watch the trailer you know what's most amazing about this trailer what you know how like there's movie stars and then there's movie, movie stars. stars yeah only leonardo DiCaprio could make brad pitt his stuntman <laughs> i think brad pitt is a movie star no that's what i'm saying brad pitt is a movie, movie star. star but only leo, leo could make him, him look yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's fair right that's crazy right so movie's not i can't believe like so many big names work with tarantino that's nuts mm. um there is another game uh it, i also forgot to show you the trailer for Thanks, it's called man. project boundary it's Sounds from like china sex game it's from china and it's uh you remember the video game shattered horizons on the pc sounds familiar it was a multiplayer shooter call of duty style but the gimmick was that you played in zero g yeah, you could play in zero gravity. And this is what this game is. Some guys saw Shattered Horizons and they were like, they were too soon. China knows what's up and they're going to bring it back. Uh, it looks really cool. Just being able to fight in these uh, kind of space maps and yes. having to watch 360 degrees. It really does change up how you look at a gunfight, right? Like you're not just on a, on a plane. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you got to look all around you, 360 sphere. There's some guy coming at you from your butthole. Like, you got to you gotta watch out. It looks pretty cool. They have a lot of different stuff. You could uh, have, like, boosters in your space pack or whatever. Um, you have, like, different shields, different power-ups. It, it looks like a first-person shooter, but it looks interesting. Okay. I just want to play more zero-G first-person shooting. Okay. Uh, the other one was... Pokemon, or no, Pokemon. Uniqlo is coming out with Pokemon shirts. Oh, I saw this, yes. You saw those? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite one? Eh, to be honest, not really any of them. I kind of like the Ditto one. I kind of just... Mm, Where it's all the starters? Yeah, I don't know. That or Team Rocket at the at the Crane game? Yeah, I mean, they're cool. I just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself, do I like Pokemon enough? But what if they're all Ditto's? That's the worst. <laughs> That's the worst. What are you talking about? That's the worst. I do like the Magikarp on the Hukusei wave. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if I'd wear that shirt. True. That's more like a wallpaper. Yeah, I want to put that on my phone. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd wear the, the Team Rocket one. The yeah. Team Rocket at the arcade. You wouldn't want the Gyarados done up as Monster Hunter? That one's okay. I I I actually really like the Unknown one. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unknown one's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's just a chump. PSA. That's just a, what'd you call me? Chimp. What'd you call me? I called you a chimp. Say to my face. Chimpanzee. How dare you? A bonobo, please. Whoa. Whoa. Um, and uh, remember Diablo three? Yeah, isn't there four? Yeah. No, there's not. Cause uh, <laughs> it's what was it Diablo Immortal for your phone? Oh yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So Diablo 3's kind of biggest season ever. Just ended. Season 16. 16? Yeah. Six fucking teen. Yeah, it hasn't been out for 16 years, but season 16. They have multiple a year. Ugh. Uh, and that was the one where passively you had the skill of the Ring of Royal Grandeur, which allowed you to have a set item bonus. So normally you need two pieces, four pieces, and six pieces to get different bonuses in your set, okay. right? But with this one, you need, only need like five or three but you still need two to get the two hmm. right so that ended and they're like listen that was crazy popular so 
we're going to help you out with another crazy one. And now the theme is the Legacy of Nightmares. The Legacy of Nightmares is a, is a set of two rings. And its bonus is that players do 750% more damage, uh, but also take, I think, a certain percentage of less damage for each, each ancient legendary they have. There's uh, three tiers of legendaries. Yeah. There's legendary, right? There's ancient legendary, which is like has a gold border around it, and yeah. they have upgraded stats. Like they have better mins and better maxes on their stats than okay. regular legendaries. Okay. And then there's primal ancients. And primal ancients are the ancient legendaries, but with a always maxed rolled stats. Huh. They're never not max rolled. And if you huh. re-roll a stat, you only get the max version of each of the stats that can get in there. Huh. So if you have a primal legacy, ancient, or you have an ancient legendary, you get 750% more damage based on how many you have. I see. Right? And normally it's, um, you only get this bonus if the only set bonus you have is those rings. Okay. But I think in this patch, uh, because you don't have the rings equipped, you can have set pieces that are legendary and then do stuff. Oh, I'm still not too okay. sure if that's the case or not, but that's what it feels like at least. Okay. Uh, and it's it's rare. It's so rare. Yeah. I just like it. Diablo yeah. 3 is good finally. Finally. Yeah. Because, yo, that, those auction house days, <laughs> pre-expansion, that was rough. Damn. That was rough. So, yeah. Uh, those, are, those are my picks. Okay. Got one last one. Go for it. Overwatch oh, has a new event. I knew I shouldn't have talked about Diablo. Shit. You shouldn't have, because uh, I'm like, oh shit, that's right. I... Overwatch has its best event of the year. What? The anniversary event. I see. If you actually buy loot boxes, this is the only event you actually should be buying them for. Why? Because these loot boxes give you the option to get all the stuff from any previous event. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's what the anniversary does. So anything you missed out in the past year. But you can get doubles, right? Yes. So that seems like you have a lower percent chance to get everything, uh, statistically. But... Because there's more stuff in the box now. Yeah, for sure. So now if you only need that one skin from two Halloweens ago, yeah, you even have less of a chance of getting it. Maybe. Maybe. But there's not that many people who only just have, who are missing just that one skin. I, I thought everyone was like you, who no. has all the skins. I don't have all has the skins. Has 90% of everything for every character. Yes, but I don't have all of them. Okay. Um, the, the fun thing is they give you one box to start with, and it's guaranteed to give you a legendary. Cool. From this event. Non-double? Yep, from this event. Nice. From this event. I got the cool police frigate skin. Yeah. But the two skins I want are the two Asians. Which are? Which are uh, Schoolgirl Diva, mm -hmm. because... Because you're perv. Obviously. <laughs> and then uh, because I'm um, extra perv, I wanted um, Bubble Tea Waitress May. Oh, you want high short shorts May? Yeah. Why not? That's what I'm going for. Okay. That's what I'm gunning for. Uh, if in two weeks I don't have them, I'm dropping 50 bucks. Ooh, baby. Because then I think they guarantee you at least one of them. That's rough. Okay. All right, we'll see how it goes next week. I'll see y'all in two weeks. <laughs> uh, let's move into our weeks. Uh, I've been doing not a lot of new stuff. Same. I'm playing a lot of Diablo. I'm playing that new season. Okay. I started up a Crusader. Yeah. Uh, and I did a Thorns build, which is basically enemies attack me, and I reflect damage back at them, and they kill themselves. Yeah, it's great. It's so good. It's so mean. Uh, Why would you be mean? <laughs> it's Diablo. The whole game is about being mean. The bonus level is a bunch of unicorns that you explode. Oh my gosh. Uh, so I'm, I've been playing that. I'm playing the Crusader. Uh, I think the downside of not eh, the downside of this build is that it's a lot of single target. Yeah. So during solo farming runs, it's not too great if I have to farm rift keys and stuff like that. Um, though the big thing for this patch, not only is it the, that season, but they added three new difficulty levels. So it now goes up to torment 16, I think. And it, it's just more loot. 
like it, it makes it easier to grind once you're higher up there in uh in levels mm -hmm. i think right now i'm running so what is it greater rift 60 is the equivalent of torment 16 difficulty but i'm running uh greater rifts at greater rift 95 yep. so these guys have like upwards of one a hundred trillion to a billion health seems excessive see it's a little excessive it seems excessive especially when you start the game and you're doing like four yes it seems quite excessive. <laughs> yeah it's uh it, it's very disgaea levels of damage mm -hmm. or at least it's getting to there i see i'm waiting for the for the reincarnations of your characters and also team attack but it's still fun. It's still good. I'm still playing. Uh, I'm still playing some. What is it? Apex Legend. Uh, Legends. It's still fun. I still really like the longbow in replacement for the wingman. Okay. After nerfs, it's still fun. Uh, but I think the the newest thing I've been playing is called Minute. M i m i n i t. Okay. It is. I I think it's on multiple consoles, but I have it on the PC. And it is a top-down Zelda-like game. It's all black and white. But the the caveat here is that you only have a minute until you die. Okay. And you have to restart. Okay. So the whole point of the game is that within a minute, you have to get certain items that stay with you after you die. So then you can progress further in the game on your next run. Oh. And it's a hard, it's a hard cap. Like, as soon as the clock hits zero, no matter what you're doing, death. It's a roguelike? Yeah. It's like a roguelike Zelda almost. But it's not It's not like get to the highest stage or whatever. It's just beat the game. Right? So it's not very hardcore. It's just it's using those elements. Okay. And there are certain things that they do that are, are pretty funny. Like uh, there's one guy you have to talk near a lighthouse, but he's old. And he talks super slowly. Oh. And it eats away your time. But like some sometimes people like that will give you good information that you need going forward. So it's like, okay, I'm going to use this one life to talk to this old guy. Um, and then when I restart, I'll use this information to my advantage. Uh, or in my last run, I got a torch, which now just shows up at my house when I start the game. And as soon as I leave my house with the torch, timer starts, and I can go now up into the forest and do different stuff. So what's the caveat? Like, why do you get to re resurrect? Why do you get to resurrect? Yeah. Video game. Oh, they don't have any lore? You're no. Just... <laughs> it's a video oh, game. okay. There's really, like, where I am right now, the story hasn't... If there is a caveat, I, I haven't heard it yet. But so far, it's it's a video game. Like, I want to know, like, is it because... Like, are you the same person reincarnating, or are you, like, your son? Oh, oh no, no, no. It's not a Rogue Legacy <laughs> style, where it's generations down the line. Yeah. You're the same person. Um, but it's fun. It, it's a little short ending game. I, I really like it. Okay. Uh, and, and I downloaded this... It was, like, $4. It was on sale, I think. It's like it's this Chinese first person shooter that has devil may cry mechanics in a style meter. Sounds like what's that in Korea? Gun? Oh, the Korean MOBA thing? Yeah. yeah where it, oh, it does sound like gun. <laughs> so yeah, uh I forget I forget what it's called. Hopefully I'll play some I'll play some of it by next week. Um Yeah. But it looks super cool. You play as this time traveling army girl from china who has a sword but it's also a first person shooter and you can combo skeletons She's got swords you can combo skeletons like i think at one point you fight off a bunch of mercenaries and then you get like sent back in time through a portal yeah. and then you have to fight a bear and then you can combo the bear yeah. and then skeletons appear in this dungeon after you solve a puzzle then you have a sword that you can like juggle enemies in the air and like warp to them and like do all kinds of shit. It judges you in style. Seems cool. Excellent. Seems very very cool. Excellent. Uh, but in general, I think I've just been listening to more music. Um, and yeah, it's actually been. It, it's been mostly like it's been a very social weekend. I'm been doing a lot of social. Oh, that's what I did. Mm. I watched some bad fucking movies. Hell, that's what I did. So first off, um, my we I went over to my friend's house and and we love watching bad things on purpose. Mm -hmm. So we watched uh, Why the Hell Are You Here, Teacher? And just like two one episode of that, just to show some people who don't really watch anime what anime is all about. 
No. You want to save this one? Are you going to watch about it? Are you going to talk about it later? No, but we have an anime episode to talk about. Oh, true. Okay. Well, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll save that. I'll save that for later. Okay. Uh, we watched that. Then we watched a Netflix game show called Flinch. Oh, yes. And the whole premise of the game is not to flinch, right? And they put people in these really precarious situations or really kind of scary <clears throat> um, situations where if they flinch, they lose, then they have to do the game again until they don't flinch. Mm. And then the whole thing is set up, uh, whoever flinches the least is the winner, right? But mm. here, and, and here's the here's the thing, though. There's no prize. They're just doing it for... They, they call it a game show. Mm. There's no prizes. Well, in MXC, was there a winner? Was there a prize? I don't know, because that was a cut version of Takeshi's Castle. I never watched Takeshi's Castle. Maybe there was no prize. I think, there was a, I think there's got to be like a cash prize of Takeshi's Castle. Was there? I don't know. I don't know. We'll never know. But here's the thing. It's cut... So badly. And the people they get, I just don't believe are that scared or flinching like that on purpose, like naturally. Hmm. It just feels like everything is acted. Everything that they're doing is, is just fake. And it's cut really weird hmm. because it's kind of like hyperactive, wacky, like... They never stay on one contestant for like more than ten, like seven seconds. They're always switching between different people's reactions really fast, and it's kind of like you're watching. Um, it's like in a horror movie or in like a teen drama where it's like the per people around me don't get me, and then it shows like a spinning panorama of adults laughing at someone, where it's like ha ha, it's all like really cut really fast and it's, uh, discombobulating kind of. That's that whole show. How old is this show? I think it's last year. Ooh. Okay. It's not great. Hmm. Well, I'll let you go on a secret. What? Reality game shows generally are fake. What? Yep. Are you telling me Fear Factor was fake? Mm, okay. I'm not telling you it was real. Did they not really drink oh, I mean, a whole beer stein of I, donkey piss? I'm sure they did. <laughs> I'm sure they did. But there's parts of it that are just, you know, fake. Sure. So, here's a fun story. What? I used to work at a mall. Okay. Very recently. Very recently, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you ever watch that game show where it's like an ATM, but the ATM just gives you money? No. You've never, never seen, seen that? No. Basically, you go up and it's like, here, you win, ca like, do me this favor, I'll give you some cash. What, the ATM machine says that? Yeah. Oh. The ATM knows who you are and everything. Weird on film and stuff and like it, it's supposed to be like you know you, you a random person goes up they put their card in and then it's like the ATM knows who they are blah 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 yeah if you complete these tasks and they they basically make them do like um either like a scavenger hunt or or like uh, some sort of like dare mm -hmm. or something yeah and if they do it and they are successful they the, the ATM will keep spitting out more cash interesting basically they give them like you know they start like a hundred bucks. They open like five thousand, ten thousand, until it's like, okay, I'm not. I, this, this dare is too much. I'm not gonna do it. Yes. Okay. Uh, we had that at our mall. And I remember sitting down in the meeting for it. It's like the contract and stuff. And yeah. It's basically, it's all scripted. Oh, I wouldn't. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Because how else would the ATM know that you're? Yeah. That it's person? like it's all it's all scripted, and it Damn. was just so. Uh. It's like watching the bubble burst, right? It's like, yeah. it's, like, it's like when you're a child and you, you realize Santa's not real. <laughs> it was one of those moments. Oh. When I was older, I'm like, well, it's the world we live in. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, so that was the game show you watched. What else did you watch? Uh, I watched the reboot of Reboot. Well, hold on. I know a lot of our listeners are not from Canada, so a lot of them won't even know what Reboot is. Well, they should. Because it's some of the greatest television in the 90s. It's the pinnacle of CG animation. In the 90s? In the 90s. I would give that to Beast Wars. No, I would not. I would give it to Reboot. I think Reboot looks better than Beast Wars. Uh, have you seen Reboot recently? Have you seen Beast Wars recently? I have. That shit's empty. Yes, I have <laughs> seen Beast Wars recently. Yo, Enzo with that eyeball? Come on. No. Old man Enzo? They're both pretty bad. Let's be real. Yeah, they're both terrible. But uh, 
everyone goes to Turing High School. You know, like the Turing test, like the guy who invented that thing that the code breaker for the Nazis, like Turing. Oh my God, that's what it's called. Yeah, it's like oh. Turing High School, and there's there's like you know there's there's the the popular guy, there's the average Joe, right? He's like the kind of popular, kind of not. Everyone kind of likes him, but he's not like crazy popular. There's a there's the edgy teenage girl. There's the average Joe's best friend, and there's the sports jock. Mm. And they all go to this crazy tech school for genius tech people. And it turns out that they all have the same class. It's in class zero. But they get a call. So when they get their call, they go down to class zero, and they're like, we're in the basement. There's no classroom here. And through just some happenstance tomfoolery, turns out there's a false wall, a telegram. They go into it, and they find a secret room with the big ass reboot logo on it. And they're like, man, this is crazy. I wonder if this has to, anything to do with the game we play. Like this whole room looks like the lobby to the a game I play. It's like, yo, you play that game too? Yo, I'm the best because I'm on this team. You're like, yo, but no, I'm the best because I'm on this team. And it turns out they're all a part of the same esports team. But they don't know each other? But they don't know each other. Oh they just know each other by username. Oh, fuck. Yeah. This is getting too anime. And this AI brought them all here because the dark code has been unleashed. There's a hack. You know, remember uh, the dark code. The dark code. What was the common writer where one of the guys was always in a fucking garage and he was always on computers like hacking shit? Was that was that not Gaim? Was that the video game one? Rider. Was that X Aid? Yeah, it was, it was a common writer. Yeah, I guess so. And they broke, and eventually they broke in. I think it was X Aid. Yeah. So like they took that set, oh, okay. <laughs> they took the X Aid set, and there's just some guy. He's like an evil hacker. He's got like 17 computers. He's hacking on all these keyboards at once. And he's like, I'm gonna unleash the dark code for my mysterious benefactor, which is obviously Megabyte. Yeah, yeah. But um. They're like, okay, you got to stop the dark code. Step into this little portal thing in the jig, and they're like, okay, we're gonna stay in here. What's wrong? What's going on? They get digitized and they get sent into the game. Oh, this sounds like Digimon. It's Digimon, but it's also Power Rangers, and it's not reboot at all. It's fucking weird. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like reboot. Con kind in of incoming game. They're in. No, like I don't think they. I don't even remember them saying incoming game. Or like you like when they win, there's no user wins. There's nothing. There's nothing. It's just Power Rangers, and they're all using their esports magic. But the thing is, is like if they die in the game, they die in real life. Well, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> that's how it works, baby. Uh, so that kind of fucking sucked ass. I'm gonna watch this. You should. I'm you watch should. all of it. The it's only ten episodes. I'm watch all of it. The final episode description says that the team meets up with the original reboot characters. I really want to see that. I'm gonna watch all of this. How long is the episode? Uh, like 20, 25 minutes. I'm gonna watch all of this. Are you are you committed to watching all of this? Yep, hundred percent. I'm gonna do it by next week. I'm gonna try and do it. Okay. All right. I'm gonna try. We're gonna try and have a review of reboot the reboot. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was not good. It was not good. <sighs> Even for a kid's show, not great. Okay. Even for a kid's show, not great. All right, so it's fantastic. Yeah. They, every single time, uh, they're, so they're, when they're in the game, every single time they want to show the, the real life actors, they do the Iron Man suit thing. Of course. Where it shows his face with a black background and a bunch yeah. of holograms. They just do that. It's good. All the time. Yeah. It's so, but they use it so much. Yeah, but that's what they do in Power Rangers. Yeah, it's also... Not good there. No, it's awesome there. So yeah, that's uh, that was that. And then the piece de resistance. We watched Fifty Shades Darker. Because hmm. we had already watched Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm, this is, sounds like a fun Friday night. Uh, <laughs> this movie fucking sucks. It's so bad. Like, the first one was bad. But this one is real trash. It everything about it reads like terrible fan fiction. Like they just lifted this story from fanfiction.net, put gave it a million dollar budget, and then set, called it a day. Why not? It's it's not good. 
It's not good. But it's great. It's bad. Okay. So there's there's a lot of things in here which I think are kind of like it's really bad writing where the the, the girl character, I for, I forget her name, is uh hanging out with whatever Gray. Nathan Drake. Nathan Gray. I don't know what his name okay. is. Uh and it's all like listen, in the last movie I I wanted to be in this like whole bondage thing with you, but you whipped me too hard. And I couldn't talk to you for like three months. And I'm so distraught because I miss you. But you're just too broken. Right? And so <laughs> there's a thing. There's a, When they first meet again, the, the main guy basically stalks her. And is like, I found out where you live. Because I'm rich. Also, get back with me. And she's like, no, I can't. And, she's, and then he's like, let me walk you home. Mm. And they walk home in the rain. And they're like, oh, God. I miss you so much. I love talking to you. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but we can't do it. And then immediately after she says we can't do it, make out sesh. <laughs> or there's another scene where they're like, he's like, listen, I know we had sex last night, but that wasn't part of the plan. All right? It's just my emotions got the best of me. Let's just hang out, have a normal day, and we'll take it slow. And we'll take, not even 30 seconds after the words take it slow have left her mouth. Are they having a bang out session in the kitchen? Yeah, it's taking it's, it slow. Yo, they're taking it the slowest, apparently. Listen, when with all the freaky shit they're doing, doing? sex it's, is taking it, it slow. slow. I uh, guess, if you put it that way. Um, it's all about context. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but but for a movie about like bondage and shit like that, these yeah. people have zero pain tolerance. Well, that's the whole point. <laughs> there's a there's a scene where Gray is like, "Listen, you don't touch me in this area." Yeah. And she, he's like pointing to his the middle of his torso, and he's like, and she's like, listen, I don't know what you mean by that. Like, what is like? Can we like get some ba- like physical boundaries here? Can you tell me what's up? Like, I got this lipstick. Let me draw on you. <laughs> Creative, yeah. And they dr- sensually. It's like a five minute scene where they sensually draw a box yep. around the area of his chest where you're not allowed to touch. But the whole time he's doing that, he's like, oh, ah, oh, <laughs> I'm like. Dude, relax. Checks you're getting out. you're getting painted on. No, it checks out. He could be uh, very sensitive there. He's a sensitive fellow. Checks out. It's it's not great. I'm sure we're gonna watch the third one at some point. Yep. You gotta finish the trilogy. I'm already two movies deep. Damn. Hot committed. But it's not good. It's and yet so, you love it. It's so bad. No, I actually I don't like it. You love I it. I don't like it's it's you bad. Love it. It's bad. There's a yeah, there's just a lot of bad shots. Like the main actress cannot act. I, I think the the most pain inducing thing is not the lips, but trying to watch her will some emotion out of her face because oh my god, like some of her line deliveries are comically bad. Like I would see this in a YouTube comedy sketch. But it has the serious tone, and everyone like reacts to it like an actor should. But she doesn't deliver. That's how you know she's a real character. That's how real people talk. There, there's a thing you do sometimes when mm-hmm. you want to express fake outrage, yeah. where you kind of like lean back and you like wave your head around, yeah. and you're like, "What the heck?" Right? She does that. Yes. <laughs> she does that. Like, maybe to a less animated extent. Yeah. But she does that at one point in the movie. And I'm like, wow, wow you really couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, I, I think they they casted her specifically because she's got a nice rack. Does she? Yeah. Her, her boobs are very perky. Her nipples are borderline perfect. What do you mean by perfect? Perfect. I, I want to say like I want like the areola like yeah. that shit is like perfect round like wow. just just like a cookie cutter just yeah. circle okay right sure and like the actual nipple portion is just like it's like this nice little bump like it's enough to like I guess like put clamps on it <laughs> in the case of this movie okay right but it's not like way out there and they're not mm. like pressed to her mm. like it's just like it's like kind of just like she's got a nice rack on her mm. I think that's why they cast her. Okay. Because there's a lot of scenes of her boobs in this movie. Well, I hope so. Also, the boyfriend always takes off his shirt, but never takes off his pants. 
well, yeah, you can't fill, you, you can't show an erect penis in cinema, or else that's just porn. I guess. I guess. Now, if it were soft, that's a different story. <laughs> that's a different story. Tal you ever seen Talladega Nights? <laughs> There's a soft penis in that one. You ever seen, uh, what's that? What's that? Forgetting Sarah Marshall? <laughs> Oh yeah, there is. There's <laughs> definitely there's a, a soft. There's penis. a flaccid dick there, yeah. and it comes into human contact. And you're like, whoa. But yeah, this movie's not good. I don't recommend it. Maybe if you want to like subject your friends to like torture, I guess. Mm. Or you want to pick apart a movie. I see, I don't know. Like, at some point when you're doing these things, yeah, I get that it's entertaining. Yeah. To a certain degree. Mm -hmm. But at, at, there's a line, though, that gets crossed, and eventually you're just committed. And a part of you guys just must love it. We love watching bad stuff, but we all also hate the movies. I just don't believe that. Listen, Tekken 2 is a bad movie. That you would watch again. I would. I did watch it twice. See? But, but only... To subject new people uh -huh. to Uh-huh. That's... No, see, I feel like you're hiding behind no. this excuse. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not good. It's not It's not a good movie. All right. All Critically right. terrible movie. Yeah, but since when did you care about what the critics have to Listen, say? I'm a critic at heart. Wow. Please. Wow, okay. I take criticism very seriously. Do you? It's why I've been on this podcast for so long. Oh, shit. Could if, have fooled me. If I thought that our morals, our, criti our critical eyes... We're out of check. Listen, we have ethics here. Do we? On this review show. I don't think we do. I think we do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know why we have ethics? No. Because we don't have a sponsor. <laughs> That's too true. If we had a sponsor, yeah. those ethics are gone. But guess, we don't. I guess you're right. But we don't. That's all we got. <laughs> Did you talk about your week already? I just went on a tangent. I... So my week was... Mo I've been on vacation for the past week. Yeah, how's that? How's vacation? It's been great. I also don't go back to work until sometime next week, so... Wow. It's Amazing. been pretty great. Uh, I've just been being outside riding my bike. Mm -hmm. um, the only new things I've did were, like, anime, but we're going to talk about that some and some other show. Mm -hmm. uh, Overwatch, basically. Uh, doing some miscellaneous car research. And... More or less it. Nothing okay. super new in relation to this show. Okay. But, yeah. How was your 180k bike ride or whatever the fuck that was? It's only 130. Fine. You know. It's good. It's crazy. It was a fun, easy day. Easy day That's on the crazy. saddle. That's crazy. Barely did any work. Right. It's fun. Cool. I'll do it again. Nice. And then, uh, yeah. So I think that's it for this week. Mm -hmm. Next week we're going to try and do a reboot. Yes. If you're lucky, we'll do Aladdin. Ooh. And um, I think... No, no, because we are in the summer movie. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? Schedule. Mm -hmm. There'll be Aladdin, Godzilla. I know there's something big after that. Dark Phoenix, I don't think that'll be. Uh, it is the summer. It is the summer. So they're all going to come like... Just one after the other. Mm -hmm. And we'll try and check out as many as we can. Otherwise, I think that was it for me. And that's it for this show. Uh, this week we do have Anime Week, so make sure to tune into that episode. We're talking about two newer anime. We, I've made the executive decision. No more Fruits Basket. Fuck that show. So Listen, you picked it. I didn't tell you to pick it. I crossed it off the list as well. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for that, and we'll see you next week. See ya.